Hi everyone, I'm Maggie Weldon from maggiescrochet.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to make this bobble necklace using Premier Starry Night yarn and Spangle yarn. So Starry Night comes in nine different colors. I absolutely love this yarn. We've used this yarn a lot in making arm knitted scarves and I think there's another project that we've done and you um, this comes in nine colors it's a number five bulky yarn and you start by making cluster stitches using this yarn and then you come back with the spangle and work the outside sparkly um, border around the cluster stitches it's really not that hard i've i've already pre-read the instructions and um, spangle is a number three light yarn and this comes in 13 beautiful colors so between the two of these yarns the possibilities are endless you can mix and match all the different colors and make all kinds of necklaces and the way the pattern works up you could really make this as long as you want or as short as you want and you could even make a bracelet um, to match the, your necklace. So um, it's a fun project and it'd make a great gift for people. So I'm going to take you to a close-up now and show you how this is made and make sure that you subscribe to our channel because it really helps us out and, and try to share and like our videos and um, I want to thank you very much for watching. So to make the necklace, you'll need one ball of spangle, and I'm going to use royalty for my sample. Then you're going to need one ball of Starry Night, and this is called Pinwheel. And you will need two crochet hooks, a larger size J, and a smaller one that you can use with the smaller spangle yarn. And I'm going to use an E, and these are the Deborah Norvo wood crochet hooks, which are really warm and light to work with. Then you'll need something to cut with and a yarn needle to sew in your ends. And the link to the pattern is listed below and here's a close up of the necklace. So with the Starry Night we'll be making the cluster stitches you see here and then we'll come back on both sides of the clusters and use the spangle to surround the cluster stitches. And then we'll make this little um, fastener here, which works really well. So let's get started. So I made a slip knot with my spangle yarn, and I've got my J crochet hook. And now in the instructions, it just says to chain two and then work a puff stitch in the first chain. So to do so I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to insert my hook into the first chain, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two loops, and then do the same thing again, yarn over, insert my hook into the first chain there, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two loops, and then yarn over and draw through three loops and that finishes my first puff stitch. Now to do the next one I just chain two again and then I yarn over and I'm going to insert into this first chain of that chain two, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, insert my hook into that first chain again, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, and draw through all three loops on my hook. And that's my second cluster stitch, or puff stitch. And then I just keep going the length that I want. So I've got one and two, yarn over, insert my hook, into the first chain of that chain two, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, go back into that first chain again, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through all three. So there I have three. So I want to chain two again, yarn over, 
go into the first chain of the chain two, drop a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, go back into that first chain again, drop a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, and draw through all three. And that closes the puff stitch. So keep making your puffs until you have 21 puffs for a necklace. And I'm just going to do enough puffs and I'll show you how I'm going to make a bracelet with this. Okay, I have a really small wrist so I've only done six um, puff stitches and I'm going to finish off after the, the uh, sixth one. So to finish off you just do one more chain like this and pull the back strand of that chain and then just cut back here. I always leave a long end and then I go back and sew that in later. So and then you just pull that all the way out and then it locks that stitch. So now I'm ready to set my um, uh, starry night aside and pick up my strand of spangle. And now I need to switch to my smaller hook, which I have here, size E. And I'm going to make a slip knot. And to do so, I make a loop like this. I bring the strand over the back and then I pull the back strand forward. I have a knot side and a slip side. I tighten the knot side. And then I put it on my hook like this. And then I pull the slip side like that. Okay, now it says to join on either end uh, this yarn. So I'm just going to start with a loop on my hook. I'm going to go into that very last chain that I did. I'm going to find it here. I'm just going to go yeah, right into a strand at the very end like this. And then I'm going to draw up. Let me do that again. So I'm going to insert my hook from front to back through one stri a strand. I want to try, to try to get a, like a tight strand there. And then I still have my starting chain on my hook. I'm going to yarn over, bring that loop up, and then bring that through the loop on my hook. And then I can tighten this. And then I'm going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm doing this very loose. And now I'm going to slip stitch between the baubles. So to do so I'm just going to go into the space between the next two baubles like this and I'm going to insert my hook like this and draw a loop up. Let me go back. Okay, I'm just going to go through some a couple of strands there, yarn over, and draw that loop up, and then draw that through the loop on my hook to complete a slip stitch. And then I'm going to chain five, and then do the same thing between the next two puff stitches. I'm just inserting my hook under one strand this time. Well, I'm going to just go ahead and go into that strand there and work a slip stitch. And then one, two, three, four, five. And again, I'm going to go underneath this strand here and I'm going to slip stitch. And then one, two, three, four, five. And you're basically just going to go all the way down the length of your necklace or bracelet. And just make sure you get a slip stitch in between the baubles. And at the end, you're going to chain five and you're going to slip stitch into the end of the necklace like that. And then now you're going to chain ten
So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then you're going to slip stitch in the first chain, and this is going to form your loop for the. I'm going to go in two strands of that chain. So I won't have that little hole. I'm going to go in the back bar here. So I'm picking up two strands of that chain so there's no like uh, strand that pulls out. So that's how we're going to connect um, the little necklace or the bracelet uh, with that loop there. And then you're going to slip stitch uh, I did that and you're gonna work on the other side of the necklace now and for this side I'm gonna chain eight it says and then I'm gonna slip stitch in the bottom two loops of the slip stitch between the bobbles so right here I'm going to go in here into that slip stitch. I'm going to go right into those two strands of that slip stitch and I'm going to work a slip stitch into that. So then after that I'm going to continue on to chain 8 again and then here's my slip stitch from the other side. I'm going to go into the two strands of it and then right into the same space that it, I used for that slip stitch. If I can get my hook down there. Okay, and then I'm just going to work a slip stitch like I want to connect them on both sides. Like that. And it's basically just surrounding the, the uh, puff stitches with the spangle yarn. Okay, so the next one, I'm going to go into here, right like that, and then chain 8 again. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going into the two strands of the slip stitch on the other side, just like that, and then I'm going right into the same place, or I could go right a little bit next to it and then I'm yarning over in the back and drawing a loop up and then drawing that through the loop on my hook and see they're connected on both sides then and then chain eight and then same thing over here go under those two like that and then at the very end I'm going to chain 8 and then slip stitch in the end of necklace so I'm just going to slip stitch where my first beginning slip stitch was right there and then draw that loop through, then I'm going to chain one, I'm going to pull the back like this, and then I'm going to cut from the back like that, and then I'll weave in my ends. Isn't that cute? And I've got a little um, loop here, and on the finished necklace the loop is right here, and now I'm going to show you how to make this little bead here. Okay, so to make the little toggle button is what it's called you're still using the smaller hook and the spangle you make a slip knot and then you chain three and you slip stitch in the first chain to form a ring right there and right there and then you chain two and you work ten half double crochets into the center of the ring 
So I'm also going to work over the end of my starting chain and you want to make sure that you do get the center. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do a chain four here just so you can see where the center is better. Okay, let's start again. Okay, so I do one, two, three, four. Then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to form a ring. Some people go in this top loop, they go in this back loop. Right now I'm going to go in this back loop right here and draw that loop out. Then right here what I want you to see is this right there. Let me get up. Let me get my needle. Okay. This right there is part of the stitch. It's not the center of the chain. A lot of times you um, people mistakenly go in there and mistake that for the center. The center is actually right here. See that right there? So you can see it better with a chain four. And if you want to, you can chain four as long as you work over the end of your starting chain like I'm going to show you here. So there I'm going to complete my slip stitch and then I'm going to chain two and then it says to work 10 half double crochets into the center of the ring. So the center is right there. So I'm going in there. Once I get my first stitch in the right place, the rest of them are pretty easy. So I'm going to work 10 half double crochets and I'm also working over the end of my starting chain. So I've got three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then it says to join with a slip stitch in the first half double crochet. So I'm going to skip my chain two and just go underneath the top two strands of the half double crochet. Yarn over, draw that loop up, and draw that through the loop on my hook. And by working over the end of my starting chain, I can now pull it and it closes up that hole in the center of the, the ring. Okay, now it says to chain one. Okay, and single in the half double crochet and then skip the next one and single the next. So you're decreasing and you're only going to land up with five single crochet stitches. So there's three. I'm skipping this one. Going in here there's four and then I'm skipping this one and then there's five. Okay so I've got five and what I want to do is make sure that this is tr the side that I've been working on is the right side. So I want to make sure that it, when I this curls, that it curls so that the right side is outside, not inside. I don't want the wrong side on the outside. So um, then it says to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. So you find your first single crochet stitch and. I'm skipping the half double crochet so I think it's like right there. I mean it doesn't have to be like super exact but that looks pretty good right there. So to finish off I am going to yarn over like do one chain pull the back like this and cut from the back right here and then that's my little button there and all I need to do is to sew this onto this end right here and then this will come around and go over the button like that. So that's how you do that. So this is the finished um, button right here and you may want to when you're sewing this on you may want to take this um, last strand that I just finished off and just kind of weave it through these, um, let me show you a little bit. Just thread your needle 
and then weave this through those last five single crochets and pull them all together. Just like that. And then just um, weave in all these ends, of course, and then just sew this to the uh, end that's opposite the loop. So just like that. So that is pretty easy, really, and you can make necklaces and bracelets and all kinds of stuff. You can make different length of necklaces and try all the different colors. So I want to thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed this video, and please subscribe to our channel. The links to everything are listed below.